Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here and you are looking for a very active worm community that's always willing to answer your questions, then you are in the right place. Today we are looking at my red wigglers in the DIY three stack system. And one of the things I want to talk about today is should you go to the trouble of making your own DIY system or should you just spend the money and get a professional setup? So as I'm going to go through and evaluate what the bin needs today, I'm just going to talk about my journey um, and the fifth year of having my DIY system that I made myself. So last time we did a really big harvest to get some castings, and so we also fed them some decent amount of food. So let's see what they've got left and see what they need for today. So looking at the top layer here, this is where I returned the worms to the system. You can see they made some nice castings right there. And kind of just going to go through here and fluff everything up and see what we've got. I'm seeing quite a bit of bedding here, but I'm not seeing anything in the way of food on this layer. So in the nice warm weather, you can expect for your worms to do really well. I mean, not really hot. I mean, I think if you have the worms outside and it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the worms will probably go dormant. But in a basement that is, you know, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, then the worms just keep plugging along and continue to do a really good job. So you can see the moisture is a little bit low in here. But... I tend to run my bins a little drier just so that I have an easier time harvesting because the last time, if you watched the last video, I did a light harvest and that is a lot of work and it really kind of annoys the worms. So I do try to avoid doing that and I try and at least get one layer to be kind of dryish so I can sift. So there's really nothing to see here on this layer. It looks like there's some old corn cobs here, a little bit of... Um, avocado shell, but other than that, there's no food on this layer. Just looks like castings and bedding. Let's look at the next layer down. Okay, so this layer down here has a lot more moisture, and that is always the case with this bin. So the top layer stays dry because I don't put a lid on it. I find that the worms actually crawl more if you put a lid on because that keeps the sides of the bin wet and then they just want to go exploring and see what's going on. If you keep the top of the bin a little bit dry, then they are less nosy and they tend to stay inside of their, um, inside the bedding and inside the bin. I did have a, cr a question about that. And another thing that worms tend to crawl is if you have a very new bin and let's just call new bin uh, younger than six months old, um, under six months old, the environment of the bin is just not established, and so it might not be as comfortable and home-like for the worms, and they might still want to go seek other places. But once you get your bin to a nice uh, equilibrium, where the microbes and the moisture and everything in here feels good to them, they don't really tend to crawl too much. Now that's red wigglers I'm talking about in particular. Other worms have different personalities or traits, like uh, African night crawlers. It doesn't seem to matter what you do. In my area, they crawl. But not seeing anything in this, and it's been about three and a half, four weeks since we looked in on this bin before. So all of these castings are you know, still doing good. That mango last time wasn't wanting to open, and it's still not wanting to open yet. But this is probably a really happy moisture for them. You can make kind of a ball, but it falls apart very easily. Uh, if you're into wanting to grow your herd of worms, herd, is that the right word? I don't know. If you want to grow more worms, then actually more wet than this is the preferred, you know, moisture. You want like 80% moisture if you want to uh, encourage them to breed. I don't need more worms, so this is just fine for me. It's not unhealthy. It's just not uh, perfect breeding moisture. Let's look at the next layer down. So this layer, and these are risers. This just keeps everything from getting compacted. Um, that was a suggestion by one of the viewers to uh, 
keep this part from becoming completely compacted and make it better for the worms. So I started doing that and it absolutely has worked. Now this bottom layer here is very, very wet. This is probably an ideal breeding condition for the worms. It's probably about 80% moisture in here. You could make mud balls with this. The springtails are a springin' in here. They definitely like this moisture level as well. And although they're annoying to me, they are uh, a, a part of the worm bin community. And they do help break down things that are too hard for the worms to eat um, by themselves. So one of the things I wanted to talk about as far as the, the DIY bin is that I made it five years ago and the plastic is starting to give way. I'll put an inset a picture there. Any place where I've drilled a significant hole in it, like the sides or the, the bottom, I am finding that that particular plastic is failing. And uh, this particular bottom layer does not have any holes on it at all. No holes in the bottom, no holes in the side. This was meant to be a sump where all the liquid would drain. Um, but if you watch the, the playlist of this, you'll discover that at some point I decided that since so many worms were coming down there and drowning, I might as well just put bedding down there for them to live if they were going to do that. So this bottom part rarely gets anything other than refresh of bedding um, time over time. It, the worms, I don't know, the hole that goes down into this layer is a sixteenth of an inch, which is only a couple of millimeters. And so most of these worms probably came down here when they were much smaller. And they're probably just stuck down here now because they probably can't get back up through, you know, a two or three millimeter hole at, you know, adult size. So I'm going to leave these guys here and we'll put the second layer on. So looking at this second layer here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. And sure enough, just as I said, I don't think adult worms can make it through that three millimeter hole. There's a reasonably adult sized worm going through the two millimeter hole. Well, I guess, like I always say, worms do what they want. So this layer down here is in a good condition, but we are going to give them some food. Um, the side of this bin is broken and uh, kind of jagged. So it seems like if you do a DIY system, depending on the quality of the plastic, and these were, you know, name brand Rubbermaid containers. So in theory, I would have thought the plastic would have been high enough quality to withstand being a worm bin for many, many years. But I think five years might be the limit on these guys cost me about $30 for the three bins. And then when we take a closer look at the top, I also drilled some large holes and then put screen on there. That's not even necessary, but that's what I thought I needed to do in the beginning. So, um, but I'm starting to see where any place that there was good size holes, I'm seeing that the plastic is starting to break. And I do have to wonder after looking online at the different plastic stackable systems, they're warrantying the plastic for 20 years. So I'm starting to think it's not the same kind of plastic from a Rubbermaid tote to a professional stacked worm system. So let me get them some food. Let's see, so they're gonna get a tomato and some zucchini, another tomato and an avocado peel. So onions, tomatoes, so they've got their own guacamole makings if that's what they want to do. And I'm just going to cover that back up with the, the regular castings here. And let me put the top on and I'll show you what I mean about the larger holes and things are starting to break. So I have the half inch holes that I um, hot glued screens onto to keep larger critters out. Most of them have fallen off and uh, the ones that are still there, just the slightest little bump and they come off. I found out later, these are really not necessary. I mean, it was it was a nice DIY project, but um, you know, now what I know about worms is that a worm would have gone through that if they needed to. If they wanted to escape, they could have gone through regular window screen, which is all that is. And looking at the bottom of the bin here, 
looking at the larger holes. These are starting to break out a little bit in a few places. And although, you know, it still works, the bin is starting to deteriorate. So even though I spent $30 on this bin, it seems that maybe five years is as far as the quality of plastic is going to let me go. So put in the comments below, you know, if you have a DIY system that's stacked like this, how long did yours last? And was it worth it? I started looking into professional stacked systems and they're running about $100, 90 to $100 US for a, a five stack system. I think you can get three stack systems for about $80, but they're also warranting the plastic for 20 years. So I am really starting to second guess myself. Was this good for a starter until you can save up money or, you know, would you do this again if you already had the hundred dollars? Let's just make it a flat one hundred dollars. If you could afford to spend that, you know, should I have done that to begin with? Okay, let's get these guys some food up here. Now all the frozen food will thaw out and the drippings will go to the lower level. And for any of you tomato lovers out there, yes, having this large tomato rot on me, get bought blossom end rot when the uh, the floods started coming, it, that really does hurt for me to uh, feed it to the worms. Although I know that they will make good use of it and help my plants later, it is very painful to throw away that large of a, a tomato. Okay, so we're gonna cover that up and straighten these guys out. So just reflecting on the last five years of this DIY bin, so after five years, the plastic is coming apart and any of the hot glue stuff is, is falling off. When these trays are completely full, each one of these trays weighs about 25 pounds, maybe even 30 pounds with wet castings. And um, depending upon your level of activity, that might be okay. But I'm getting to the point where I can't pick this whole thing up if it is close to being finished because it weighs you know, 50 or 60 pounds, depending. And um, that's just a backache looking to happen. So I'm not... I try not to fill it all the way up anymore because it gets so heavy that, you know, it hurts my back. Not to mention that the quality of the plastic, it is starting to bow in the middle. I did start putting those risers in there, which I forgot in case anybody notices. If I didn't notice, I, I did just now notice the pile of risers that I'm going to have to disassemble and put them back in. But yeah, so it bows in the middle and it's starting to break down and it is super heavy. So I am starting to, you know, seriously consider um, swapping these worms out and putting them into a professional stacked system uh, just basically for ease of use of me because each one of those, anybody who's got a stacked professional system, um, please chime in and let me know how each one of those, how much each one of those weighs when it's full. Uh, and that kind of might make me make my decision because if each one of those is only 10 pounds, then that's not going to be a problem. So that is where I'm going right now is, yes, it's cheaper. Yes, it saves space going vertical, um, you know, which does make more castings, which is why instead of using just bus trays, I used this uh, in the beginning. But now I'm just seeing that this plastic is breaking down. So what do you guys think? Should I get a professional system when this, this thing is slowly dying on me? Or should I go and get another DIY system? All right, guys, well, if you like this series, I have an entire playlist that I will link right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like that video over there. Okay, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.